Hello, I'm Tom Meeks, and this is 3D Design for Fun and Life, featuring Moment of Inspiration, using the uniquely easy noun and verb method. This session is the Object Browser. Now let's turn our attention to the Object Browser. The Object Browser can be toggled on and off using the Browser button at the bottom right of the interface. So if you don't see it at first, you'll know how to bring it back into view. There are three sections to the Object Browser. They are labeled Objects, Types, and Styles. Each of these sections allows us to show and hide objects and select or deselect objects based on different criteria. We want to demonstrate just how important it is for you to get into the habit of naming nouns. The object section only lists named nouns. We open the object section by clicking on the plus sign left of the object's label. The plus changes to a minus and we see a list of five named objects. Notice we illustrate using a numbering scheme to help list objects in our preferred order. While not mandatory, we like to order and group our objects by beginning each name with a numeric value. In this case, we're using 100 unit gaps to provide room for inserting new objects anywhere in the ordered list. Before we do anything else, we will select the large sphere in the center of the view window by clicking on it. The sphere's property box appears in the upper right of the screen. It indicates that the large sphere has not been named. Clicking on the word unnamed brings up the Edit Object Name dialog box with a text box labeled Name. We can type in a name for our selection. What you use for name is entirely up to you. For now, we'll simply use 150, just to demonstrate that any name is helpful, and click OK. Notice where it now fits in the list order. The new name replaces the word unnamed, and the object is now listed in the Object Browser in alphabetical order. The eye indicates that the sphere named 150 is visible. None of the other objects have eyes next to their names. That indicates they are hidden. We will now show all of the objects associated with these names by clicking to the left of each name. If we count the items, we see that one seems to be missing. That's because small red sphere is hidden inside the large sphere. Click on the eye next to the name 150 to hide the large sphere and reveal the small red sphere. Clicking in the area to the right of each name selects or deselects the named object or objects. A yellow circle in this space indicates an object is selected. Let's toggle selection for each name in order. We'll toggle 100. Oops, we cannot select 150 because it is hidden. We must first show 150 in order to select it. Okay, toggle 150. Toggle 200. In this case, two objects share the same name. We can use the eye to show and hide both at the same time. If we click on one of the objects in the view window to deselect it, only a half circle will appear after the name. That indicates that some of the nouns having that name are not selected. By the way, to deselect everything, all we have to do is click on an empty area of the view window. This is the primary way to ensure nothing is selected. Before moving to the Type section of the Object Browser, we will demonstrate how to put what we have just learned to practical use by using the smaller sphere to hollow out the larger sphere using the verb Boolean diff by doing the following. Click on the Construct tab to open it. Click on Boolean to open the Boolean methods. Click on diff to select the Boolean diff verb process. The prompt says, select base objects. Select the large sphere by clicking on it in the view window. Notice that the object browser now has a small yellow circle to the right of 150. Click on the done button. The prompt changes to select objects to subtract. And there is an option called keep objects. Make sure that the keep objects option is checked. We want to subtract the small sphere. 
but there is no way for us to select the small red sphere inside the view window because it is hidden inside the larger sphere. However, because we named it, we can use the object browser to select the small sphere even though we cannot see it. Click in the space to the right of the name for the small red sphere. A small yellow circle appears to show us that we have successfully selected the small red sphere. Click on Done. We'll cut the large sphere in half and hide the small red sphere to show that it worked. We could not have made this cut without having named the small sphere and using the object browser. Now we will move to introducing the types criteria. Every noun or part of a noun is defined as a type. 2D nouns are called curves. We'll toggle curves using the area to the left of the curves type. Surfaces can look like solids, but they are flat and cannot be 3D printed. When we show and hide surfaces, we affect the selection of edges and faces. 3D printing requires that a noun be a solid. Solids have parts like edges and faces. When we show and hide solids, we affect the selection of edges and faces. We sometimes hide edges when capturing a picture of our work. We rarely hide faces, but it's worth toggling faces on and off to see the effect on our solids. Making everything visible and deselecting everything by clicking on an empty spot in the view window, we will look at the third way we can work using the object browser. Close the type section by clicking on the minus sign and open the last object browser section, Styles. When we expand the Styles section of the object browser, we see a list of all the currently available styles. Just as with object names, the area to the left of active style names allows us to show and hide objects in that style, and the area to the right allows us to select and deselect objects of that style. Let's try a few. Default, eye off. Default, eye on. Notice the link with the objects named 150 and 300 as we toggled the default eye on and off. It gets a bit more interesting when we click on the eye next to cyan. Notice that the eye next to 500 is also turned off, but the eye next to 200 is only partially turned off. Here are the various combinations for any given noun that might result from using the object browser's three different sections. A full eye next to a group name means all the objects in that group are visible. A half eye next to a group name means some of the objects in that group are visible. No eye next to a group name means none of the objects in that group are visible. A full yellow circle to the right of a group name means all of the objects in that group are selected. A half yellow circle to the right of a group name means some of the objects in that group are selected. No yellow circle to the right of a group name means none of the objects in that group are selected. The ability to use more than one criteria to show and hide or select and deselect objects and groups of objects is very powerful, but it can only be used if we remember to name our nouns. Naming nouns is an excellent habit to embrace.